German, um, were basically three and a half people. Uh, that doesn't refer to my colleague uh, Kaja Odrozek being a rather petite uh, person, but uh, it refers to the fact that I work half for Online Academy and half for um, the International Academy for Leadership, which is something uh, I will tell you about a bit later. So, um, with three and a half people, uh, we do kind of a lot of events. We uh, started out with something around 50 to 60, and we drastically reduced it to this year. So, um, this year we'll also have way less participants, 1,500 only, um, than we had in the years before. Um, which is something uh, that has to do with uh, a lot of other activities that are unfortunately also uh, in our portfolio. Um, so this is basically what we do within the foundation and uh, sometimes we just have to take a look at the mind map ourselves and, and think about, oh, is this something we do or should we do this? Have we got the time? Have we got the resources? And um, that's one of the problems. Um, it's also a nice chance for us because uh, it gives us the opportunity to just, you know, outsource projects, um, be more of a controller, be more of a, um, a, um, a solicitor and also a um, kind of a, how should you say it, um, ein Berater, a, um, a consultant, sorry, uh, uh, than, than actually doing stuff yourself. Um, when we talk about our platform, um, what we have is a uh, very old uh, learning management system that's actually built upon uh, the platform of a content management system called Webcom that never really took off, and it's ten years old. Ten years, ten years old now. So we really have to change it very soon because we've been adapting and you know building on it and so forth, and that, that doesn't really work out. Something that's really important in the international online conferences is that we've got a multi-language forum. Um, normally it's two official languages um, in most conferences, but we've gone away from that because it's very, very expensive to, um, uh, to translate all the uh, seminar materials and also the fora. That's really a big chunk of money, as we shall see in one second. Um, we also um, work more and more uh, with video. That can be just a video statement, which is a very nice tool if you've got a good uh, interviewee and a good interviewer. Um, that uh, three-minute video statement with a good discussion after that, I think, is the most effective learning um, utility you can have. And it's low cost, it's very fast to deliver it, and you can deliver it almost everywhere because people can choose and pick um, what kind of quality they want in the video stream so you can watch a video in HD in Germany or also watch it somewhere in Africa where you just have to you know um, go down with the quality of the video. Um, something that we're doing more and more is video conferencing. Um, you can see over here we've got the example of our um, Adobe Connect system. Um, this is something we will be introducing very soon, and uh, I've al al already had some uh, people interested in the, the system because it's, it's a very good, very stable um, system, and uh, I will present it later on to my colleague here on the um, on the board. And um, before that, we used we, uh, to work with a with a German company. They're called Make TV, and they have a product that basically specializes in video streaming, but adds. Um, chat components and so forth towards it. The problem with all that um, is, and it's really ameliorated with, uh, with, the, with the Adobe product, um, once you've done your online video conference, it's really hard to get the data out. So you, you want to see what has happened here, you want to be able to play it back. That's most of the times not something that manufacturers have really thought about. Um, so how do you get the data out and how do you really conserve stuff in order to use it again. Um, this was a, a very nice thing, um, we shall see in a second too. We had this year a nice conference on Facebook Revolutions and we did a very nice cooperation with Social Media Week here in Berlin. So this is also totally brilliant to actually get into a completely new 
um, focus groups and, and, and interest groups and, and get people interested in e-learning that have been you know, working in the web for like five to ten years and they've never done anything with e-learning. Yeah? So they, they just use social media. And it's really good to have the exchange uh, in both ways. So it's not just you telling them about e-learning, but it's also them teaching you to, how to, to effectively use social media. And we really profited a lot from that. And it also gave us a great network to roll out our online courses to um, possible new clients, so to speak. Um, about uh, the international online conferences per se, why do we do this? Um, very easy, I mean, we're online, so um, it's very easy to roll out this product to all over the world. And with a possible international on, uh, audience, you should, you know, go international. Um, at the same time, it's of course one of our core values to actually facilitate intercultural exchange and intercultural ex um, understanding. Um, and it's very good for our international um, uh, project offices to actually be able to, to show people, hey, look, there's a nice online course that we would like to provide to you. And uh, they bring, um, many in, bring in many of our clients. And it's a good reputation also for them to um, also have a, a, um, an online product that they can show off and uh, that they can um, demonstrate, look, we, we've done a video for this next online course and it had 400 uh, participants, it was a big thing. So it's, um, it's a very nice instrument to work with. Um, and what I said, with 400 people, th this is the kind of scope we're looking for. So it's a broad spectrum instrument, so to speak. You will not be able to go in really deep into a learning process or something. It's actually already more of a, a PR um, uh, instrument, but it works uh, very nicely as something else that we shall see in a second. It's a great door opener to actually get people on your platform, discuss first with them, and then bring them to other fora where you can go into other discussions with them. Um, we also do this because there's a lot of money in it. <laughs> we are 100% publicly funded, and um, the, the means that are handed out by the Bundesministerium des Inneren, which is the, the uh, uh, not foreign, but uh, the home office, so to speak, of, German, of Germany, um, they are limited. And you have to use those for computers, for tech data, things for houses, etc. Et and the other two uh, offices, the federal office and the federal ministry for um, uh, economic cooperation, they provide funds for project working which makes this, of course, ideal for us. So we have got a nice big project and we can get a lot of money from them that's not so contested as the other money, so to speak. Um, and, of course, uh, find a nice, very nice picture here. Without money, we'd all be rich. Um, yeah, that's so good. I mean, I would have such a nice time doing my online courses if I, had, uh, if I didn't have to think about, you know, how to spend tax money and how to document everything and uh, to oblige the, the limits that are there and so forth. Yeah, so, so far we've done 12 of those international online conferences. Next year we'll do at least another three. Um, two will be on elections in the US and in Russia. So um, rather really hardcore politics and strategic uh, planning kind of seminars, conferences. Um, what did we learn from doing those international online conferences? Uh, many things really suck. Um, for example, multi-language is really expensive. Uh, it's really bothersome because you have to find a translation um, office, they, you have to sign a contract with them, and with public funds you have to uh, actually do a, a, a long process uh, where you ask many, many um, people uh, to give you a price quote and, and then you have to pick the, the, the cheapest one, which isn't always the best and so forth. So that was really complicated. My first impression when, when I did my first um, uh, online conference this year was I hate time zones. It's horrible. You plan for 400 people that are all over the world and you're never sure will there be somebody. You've got 400 visitors and you've got 10 people in the forum and you think, oh God, uh, I'm so dead. What did I do wrong? But it's just this way. You have to really make sure um, you plan in time zones and uh, sometimes video streaming is not a good option just for that because then people will watch the video so you can just tape the video in advance, save a lot of money, save a lot of fuss um, and it's way easier. 
Uh, broadband sucks, <laughs> very much so. Um, apparently, also in Germany, we had a, a nice uh, talk uh, last year, uh, this year, with an expert who was totally bummed out because the video, um, the video connection didn't work, and it was a German problem. So our broadband was too slow, which really, okay, confused me. But apparently, there's some problems. So technology is, I think, sometimes way far more advanced than uh, than our internet connections, and we always have to. Uh, keep that in mind, especially in the international, um, com in the international context. And also, um, it's all about the content, um, but the platform is also the most important thing. So, kind of a, um, a double entendre here. Um, you will always find that people have totally different preferences in an international setting on how a platform looked like. And I think there's such a thing as, as you know, kind of a browsing culture or something that's specific, specific to, to countries. So you will never make everybody happy. Uh, and we, we really see that, that some regions really like our courses and in other regions people, you know, they just can't stand our platform and hate the guts out of it. So, but this is just how it is. Okay. Um, going on to the conference itself, um, we spent 27,000 and something in change, um, which is kind of a lot of money, but if you look at the cost per participant, it's a rather cheap measure, I would say, because if you invite people to Germany um, for two weeks, which is roughly this, um, you will spend 15,000 uh, ahead. So, 70... 70 euros is kind of okay, I would say. Um, and that also justifies, I would think, that you can't go into deeply very much, but you have first contact with your customer, and then you can possibly you know, establish a long-lasting relationship, which is something I'll come to in a second. Um, just to give you an idea how we market our conferences, I'll show you a quick video, if it works. This was for our Facebook Revolutions um, uh, conference. We went through a very serious crisis. All the manifestations were organized and discussed on Facebook and Twitter. A lot of people say that the Arab Spring was a Facebook or Twitter revolution. We didn't expect it to come that quick and that. Uh, Fascinating. We are a new generation, we can't tell us that it's forbidden and we will say it's okay, forbidden, we don't do it. We will do it over and over and over again. They decided the joy of the world will be to go to the street at some point to make a wonderful revolution. So, okay, that's a, a little trailer that we had uh, professionally, sorry, professionally done by um, somebody we know, you know, video guy. And uh, it's it's actually really cheap. I mean, we paid a thousand euros for this, and it gives you about, if you do it right, it gives you two thousand to three thousand clicks on YouTube. So, um, that really, you know, kind kind of spreads virally if it's really properly done. So was a very good measure. I didn't show you the Pakistan trailer because this one was really bad, so <laughs> we paid a lot of more money for this one, but it wasn't as kind of as good. Okay, um, yeah, marketing is really important because um, you have to let people know. I mean, still after, you know, we've been running for 10 years now and uh, you still have to really keep people informed and, and push information towards them because they won't come voluntarily, but I think that's just um, something that we'll have to deal with. All our courses are for free. Still, you have to really keep people informed and, and try to, to get them uh, and put them on your platform. Um, something, you know, some thoughts about participants. Unfortunately, we've got few very young participants. Most people are 35 plus years. So that sometimes can be a bit bothering, especially if you want to have a good discussion about Facebook revolutions and you talk with people that are like 70. You know, that can be really tough. Um, we've got more uh, participants from the more active project offices. You can really kind of screen your project offices um, uh, by the number of, of participants they will give you to your online conferences. And um, as I said, it's a door opener. 
um, the online conferences because then people will try to look into our other seminars what what we actually provide and and they will probably find something that suits them and be a returning customer I've got no figures on that I'm afraid because um, we, we haven't um, gotten around to actually uh, looking into that but um, at the moment we are really trying to to get the numbers and and work with uh, Google Analytics and so forth to be really sure what people are clicking on, what's interesting, what's good for them, and try to you know, organize more in a strategic way um, how, we, how we deal with things. Um, and a really big issue, I would say, for the quality of the content uh, in the international online conferences is that the participants are highly different, so it's a very heterogeneous group of um, participants. Yeah, just to give you a quick look, so from all over the world, this is our colleague Christian Tax, who uh, who is from Berlin, and uh, yeah, uh, so people from all over the globe, which is very nice. About content, as I said, uh, user-generated content um, is some. Sometimes it's really like you know Betty Bot's uh, blend of, of all flavored uh, beans from from Harry Potter. So you never know what to expect. Some people write really brilliant essays in the forum and other people um, are not able to, to write a coherent sentence. But that's just, just something we have to live with as our courses are completely open and we, we have to provide them in this way because we, we are completely publicly funded. On the other hand, we've got very static um, um, trainer or, or, or uh, moderator generated uh, content, um, which is kind of a shame because we're working in a in a um, medium that really prides itself on, on being open and being collaborative. But in reality what we do is we write a word document on what we try to teach people or what we try to get people to realize and then we build around that some method that, that uh, tries to achieve this goal in, in, um, in contrast with a, a personal learning environment that adapts and that's, uh, that's open. So I went to the um, personal learning environment uh, lunch table today and I'm, I'm really Interesting, uh, interested in your ideas and your feedback. What one one could do to to be more open, to be more dynamic, and to actually, you know, um, try to also um, find out people's strengths and address those directly in order to get a more uh, collaborative approach in those kind of conferences. Um, on the other hand, I I really asked myself in the last couple of weeks, how can we analyze what's going on in our conferences? That's really tough. I mean, you can copy all the, um, all the uh, fora and, and, and look at uh, words, for example. So what's really, what's popping up? What's really important? This is a very nice app called Wordle, where you can uh, input um, word lists and it will show you how, how often they come by the size of the word. Um, where you can just count them and, and see that people talk about conflict uh, almost double as much as about solutions. Yeah? But it's not really a, a good statistic tool, so how would you do that? Are there any ideas in the room? I would really be grateful for those. Um, lastly, um, about conflict resolution and uh, peacekeeping. Well, as, you, as I've told you, this is not really the, the right instrument to do it. This is, you know, it's just a door opener, as we can see here. But it is a door opener, and we've also got the International Academy for Leadership, where we invite people to Germany. After four weeks of e-learning, they, um, they will be paid a, a two weeks visit to Germany, and they you know, they can have a, a great conversation there with with people their age. And um, it's very nice because it's young people and from totally different countries. And the effect that you always get is people meeting for the first time and hugging each other. And, and they're like, oh yes, I am, uh, we met online and we discussed this and so forth. And I mean, we've got, we've got stories like two people from Pakistan and India actually getting married over one of those courses. So I, um, I think uh, my, my predecessor was absolutely right to say, um, uh, my, my speaker before me, I'm sorry, predecessor, speaker before me was absolutely right to say that it's just about, you know, getting people to meet on a nice level. And... Um, um, the online sphere is a very good door opener, but what I would really contest, and I think we can have a nice discussion on that, is whether people will um, be less inclined to use racial stereotypes, to use conflict in the internet. I think it's, it's rather that 
um, people um, who feel kind of anonymous on the internet will have harder discussions, will have more brutal discussions. We've had a couple of examples there um, that I would also kind of, uh, kind of share, but um, just let's, let's keep that in mind and just discuss that later. Um, the third step is we need to focus more on community, which is why we are, at the moment we're building this, um, which is our new learning environment that we want to roll out all over the world. And um, we also got a little thing called it's a liberal world club. So there we have a um, the possibility to actually maintain a um, a community that's stable over many many um, conferences. So people will have the opportunity to meet again and again. What we've realised there, of course, is that it works best. Sorry, here on Facebook. I mean, people people are just they're already already there and they really like it. And so it's, it's the best place to actually keep your community um, and it's got a lot of disadvantages. Many people from countries that we work with can't even access it or are afraid to actually input stuff there um, that's political because they're afraid of reprieve and so forth. So um, um, we really have to see how it works out. But what we can't do is build a Facebook, but we will have to you know, find a good community that actually um, enables people to... to to work almost like on Facebook and, and just integrate it into their daily lives. Okay, so my thesis, uh, what we need to do is we have to focus on building stable learning communities. You can do that on the internet definitely. Most of the times you will have to have some face-to-face -face contact. Um, I really would like to discuss with you guys how can we do that, how can we make stuff more sustainable, how can we make it more stable, how can we have um, returning customers generated? What's the kind of thing that brings people back to one website and just, you know, sticks, so to speak? Um, also, added my uh, contact information and uh, under this link that I put down, you will find all the data, all the material um, that I've gathered so far. Um, it will take another couple of hours, but it'll be there tomorrow, I promise. Okay, so far from me. Thanks. <coughs>